Mark, I can't. Are you ready? E to the negative 4x integrated from 0 to 1. Oh, I was Yeah, so they give me some degree of math type for the question, but not for the answer. So up carrot is to the power of, right? Yes. So that's oh, one fourth minus e to the negative four over four. So you have to buy the fancy pink version to get a good math type on it. Oh, we need the music to make you stress. <laughs> So did you guess and check you sub or actually you sub? Actually you Nice. Oh, I'm impressed. Oh, I'm impressed. 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 i is take the derivative of zero of log of x plus four plus e to the negative three x. Derivative of zero. Uh, uh, ah. Oh, people already answered. Oh. Uh, uh, Oh no! I didn't think so. Um, did you get it wrong? Oh no! Oh my god! Oh jeez! It's not going to get success rate on a derivative problem, I gotta say. That's a way up, guys. Oh, I'm so oh, oh, I'm oh, 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 must be. Uh, if, uh, it must, oh, sorry, it should be is, it must be. Actually, do get down to two just like that. Are you integrating, or did you take derivatives of the answers? Oh, I just took derivatives of the answers and saw the scores. Then you have to figure out one, two, yeah? Oh, Oh, yeah. 
after school, but uh, before school tomorrow, whatever you want, if you want more practice, if you say, I know I screwed this up, or I've been having trouble with this, I will be happy to review it or give you more practice. These are the big ideas on the test. 87 is shells. Uh, you have to know when to use shells, when not. The most important by far is draw a pick and the slice revolve. That's what tells you if you have a washer, a disc, or a shell. Um, is an X slice go up and down or side to side? Up and down. Up and down. And a Y slice goes side to side. Um, the, the picture is required. It's not something that's fixed. I have a point built into my rubric. Did they draw the picture? And do they have a clue as far as what's being revolved? Second, the general idea is always that it is a unwrapped rectangle. <coughs> so the volume is always 2 pi, as opposed to pi out front, which is like a washer or disc. 2 pi, and you've got the radius and the height in there, and the thickness dx or y. Um, and depending on whether it's X or Y, you might be making all X or all X, Y. Yes, sir? What's a shell versus disc? It all has to do with the picture. Uh, if you choose, oops, if, for example, say you looked at this here graph, uh, that is probably a parabola. And the thought process, say, goes around the y-axis. Okay? Now, would you want, the question is not, will I use a washer or a shell? The question is, what variable will I use? What variable would you use? Uh, you use x. You use x, because you don't want to put this equation in y terms, yeah? Even if there was a y there. So we're going to use x. That's my first choice. Then I draw an x. Draw an X slice that looks like this, and revolve the X. When you revolve that around the Y axis, you get that. Then and only then do I see I'm using shells. shells. Okay, I don't choose, shells does not come first. Shells comes way down the line. It's what variable do you use, what's made when I revolve that variable, then it's shells, washers, or discs. Shell is made. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, if there are cases where you have choices, it's entirely possible that maybe I have uh, square root of x and a line here. Uh, x over 2, I think we did one like this, yeah? Do you agree that both of those are equations are pretty easy to work with in x and y? They're both plus, there's no plus or minus, there's no monkey business, either one cool x or y. You with me? Yeah. Okay, if I said revolve that around the uh, y-axis, and you said, I don't know, I'll use either one, uh, what would you think, an x or a y? I'd probably use x. Okay, if you used x, then your slice looks like this, and what's made? A shell. A shell, all right? But say the person next to you said, well, I used y. When you use y, what's made? A washer. A washer, okay. So you would say, all right, based on this, I have either variable I could use, and if you had time, shoot, you could do both and check your work. They should come out the same. So um, it's possible there are choices. Okay? Any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, make sure your answer should be positive. Uh, if it's not positive, which is entirely possible in a 
shows come. It's either because your radius is negative or your height's negative. Uh, so go back and figure out where your mistake was. You cool? Uh, 86 is even slash odd, especially as applied to integrals. Uh, you probably need to know that when you integrate something symmetric about the origin and f is odd, then that equals yeah. zero oh. if f is odd. And if you go from negative b to b, it's equal to two times zero to b because there's symmetry if f is if f is even. Um, use good uh, integral rules. For example, if I say, if I gave you some fact about what piece was um, negative 2 to 6 of 3f plus 2. Then please, I beg you, say I actually, maybe I gave you something like this. Okay? And if I told you that uh, <coughs> 0 to 2 of f is <coughs> 7, or something like that, and f is even, then I would encourage you to use good calculus in terms of separating this and then using the pieces. You with me? Don't just, if you keep it structured like this, you'll have more success than if you just throw around numbers that are given. That, that sloppy thinking usually leads to mistakes. Are you with me? Okay. 85 is the mean value theorem. The big idea is there's a place where the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change, or the secant slope equals the tangent slope. That should be switched to be consistent. Um, the conditions are the function must be continuous. continuous on the closed interval, so all the way through the endpoints so that you can draw slopes between the endpoints and differentiable on the uh, open. open because the derivative point is usually inferior and so it just has to be differentiable on the open. You must show those are met before you do an MVP problem. If you just start throwing around numbers, you have to show the theorem's conditions are met first. Show met first. Uh, there are typically two types of problems. There's the ones that you're getting in the book. Uh, Find the C guaranteed by the mean value theorem, uh, where f of x is 3x squared on 0 to 3, in which case you're just trying to find the place where the tangent slope is the same as the slope of the mean. <coughs> so with me? Mm -hmm. are, are those going OK? Yes. All right, then there's the AP style, usually a table. Uh, you're looking for where the slope between the endpoints is equal to the question they asked about. All right? Again, meet the conditions. Last but not least, subcase. Rule A is MVT, average rate of change equals instantaneous rate of change, plus another idea. And that is that if you not only have a curve that's continuous and differentiable, but also the endpoints are equal, And it must be the case that there is a slope of zero. F prime equals zero. Okay, that's rule A. So when you have a rule A case, then you're actually going to meet three conditions. <coughs> if I say show rule A, I say <coughs> the function is continuous and closed, differential on the open, and the endpoints are equal. And therefore, rule A guarantees a zero derivative. You follow? Mm -hmm. All right. 84, logarithmic differentiation. The big idea is you use logs of both sides before taking a derivative to make the derivative easier. 
there are two times you do it. One is when you have a variable in the exponent. For example, if you had y equals uh, x to the sine of 3x, to take the derivative on that, that's a wacky derivative. You can't use the power rule. You have to say, man, that sine of 3x going up there is terrible. I need to get it down. Well, I can't get it down. I can't just move it down. That's only a log rule. So you take the log of both sides so that you can move that exponent down, and then you take the derivative of both sides using the inverse of derivatives. You follow? Mm -hmm. All right, the other is when you have super duper ugly functions where you can use log rules to blow something up. So for example, if you have y equals x squared plus one to the third times root of x minus one over root of four minus x cubed or something like that, I wouldn't want to take a derivative on that. That would be a mess. Cloud rule, quotient rule, chain rule, it's, it's all over the place. All over. So instead, you take the log of both sides so that you can blow it up into logs of lots of little pieces by log rules, and then you take the derivative. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right. 33 is integrating even powers of sine or cosine. <coughs> I'm not big on studying for math, but there are definitely some things you'll need to have memorized. You must have down the power reduction identity for sine squared. What is sine squared? One. Okay. And cosine squared is plus. After that, it's just making sure that you are you're subbing properly. There's a T issue in there you have to be careful with and just do it well. I'll also say this. The general rule of thumb is to get X and 2X, just do an angle double the angle. So if it was sine squared of 7X, then this would be cosine of 14X, 14 14 right? Uh, that's good. And 82 is differentiability, which breaks down into easy and hard. The easy ones are the find A and B, so this piecewise function, whatever, x squared plus b, uh, x plus 2. Uh, find A and B, so f is differentiable. <coughs> Uh, which implies which? Does differentiability imply continuity? Yeah. Yes. Does continuity imply differentiability? Oh, yeah. Not necessarily. Okay. That's the easy ki kind. You're going to get two equations, one based on the continuity, the left hand, right hand limits of the functions themselves must be equal. Then you have another equation based on the derivatives have to be equal at zero. And so you would use those two equations to find A and B. You follow? Do you follow? Mm -hmm. The harder is to prove a derivative doesn't exist using the definition, using the alternate definition. First, make sure you understand the alternate definition of the derivative. It is used for finding a derivative at a point, and it's used in this case to prove there's a set of terms. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to practice a case like that or you good? Right. What? Yeah. All right. Um, and that, I think, is the meat of the previous stuff. Uh, the recent stuff, anyway. Though, I reserve the right to question you on anything you've ever learned in any math class ever from kindergarten on up. 3 plus 3. 3 plus, plus three. 3. Go. Divide by... I want one. 6 times 8. 32 divided by 7. Divide until you get the repetition. Go. All right. 8018. Let's do that first. If you have uh, done this homework, then get out a colored pen so you can grade your AP work and get a feel for how these are graded. 
If you have not done this, then your weasel, don't pay attention. Oh, goodness. And just did this. Now, the grading this, though, is valuable exercise. You can see both how you did and what you did wrong, but also uh, where the parents <coughs> are good. All right. So, we're on 88B on the first rate response. Do you see on that? Do you for the live question, please? Okay, yeah. here it goes. Um, first is the equation for the tangent line. Um, what do you need first to find the equation of the tangent line? Right. Can you? You don't. So do you need to integrate first to get the equation so that no. you can do the tangent line? No. Oh my God. Uh, they probably screwed up, right? They probably put the particular solution part. They, they probably meant to put that first. They probably messed it up. That should be question A, right? No. There are over 500 calculus teachers that review these questions before you see it. Up. They didn't mess up nothing. If you think they messed up, you messed up. You have no idea what you're doing, okay? And you best check yourself. So, um, it is not a mistake. You do not have to integrate. You have everything you need to do the tangent line. You need a point, like you said, one, zero, and a slope. How do you find the slope? Uh, you need dy, dy, dx. dy, dx at one, zero. Is it important to communicate, hey, I know, I need, where, if you find the slope? Yeah. It is. If you don't show it, you're out for the tangent line. It doesn't matter if you write the tangent line right. If you don't show where the slope came from, you're done. Zero. Okay? Um, one, one, zero, what's the slope there? E to the zero times three minus six. Did you get negative three? Yes? Okay. So the tangent line equation then is y minus zero, which you could definitely not write if you want, is negative three times x minus 1. Cool. Uh, it then says use your tangent line to approximate f at 1.2. Remember you have some funky curve. You found the tangent line at 1. And the idea is at 1.2, which is close by, the two y values are probably pretty close to each other. So your tangent line is a good ex estimator, right? Um, you could do this two ways. You could just say, I never even said y. I just said y at 1.2 is this. Is it okay to have a hard equal there? Now what does y refer to? Is y referring to the curve or my tangent line? Tangent line. And does my tangent line equal negative? You're okay there. Okay, that's true. This is equal to negative 0.6. Now, if you said f at 1.2 is equal to, then you're in trouble. It's an approximation. But you're plugging 1.2 into your tangent line and getting negative 0.6. All right, with your color can, here you go. First, did you use the derivative to find the slope is negative 3? Yes, ma'am. On the y, probably not. I don't think so. Um, it's, it's, it is a little nebulous, to be sure. Um, and thank you for asking the question. Uh, it's important that you jump in here, y'all. Uh, now, if you didn't show that, then the tangent line you're out for. You're, you're not showing where the slope comes from, so they're not going to look at the tangent line. Uh, but if you show where the slope comes from, then now we're headed for the tangent line. Did you get the tangent line right? And again, if you don't have minus zero, that's not an issue. It's anything that's equivalent. It could be slope-intercept form if for whatever reason you wanted to waste your time. Anything that's mathematically equivalent. You down? And then the last point is for the approximation. <coughs> Did you get negative 0.6 and not break any notation rules along the way? So it's so if you just... Honestly, if you just have naked work over here, I think it's atrocious, but you probably would get full credit for it. <laughs> but if you had, like, like, I just did everyone equals. Oh, then you're out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, for the first one. Yeah, you would get two extra. Okay? All right. Uh, this is the most important part of the lesson that I want to go over, okay? This is super major work for you, all right? So when you go to... Find this particular solution. You have to integrate to get the particular solution means what's the original y equal to. 
So we do that by integrating, but first, what do we have to do? Separate the, separate the variables. dy over y equals 3x squared minus 6x a to the y. Thank you. All right, cool. Are you done? All right, now integrating. Uh, I personally am very cautious about integrating anything that's even the least bit wacky. So I took a second step of rewrite and made sure that I'm integrating this correctly because that's there are a ton of people that say the antinomia is 1 over e to the y. And it's not. It's negative e to the negative y or one negative 1 over e to the y. <coughs> There's a negative in there. The fact that it's a denominator means something. Uh, the denominator, or the right side is pretty easy. x cubed minus 3x squared plus c, yeah? So either one. Um, oops. Either one, we're good, yeah? And if you have negative 1 over e to the y, that's fine too. Now what do we do? Plug in the initial condition. Using 1, 0, I get negative e to the 0 equals 1 minus 3 plus c. e to the 0 is 1, so that's negative 1 equals negative 2 plus c. So c is 1. Putting c back in, I get negative e to the negative y equals uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. And now, am I done or do I need to keep solving? Solve. All right, so what did you move first in cell to what? Negative. I meant negative. The outside negative e to the negative y is negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. Is that what you did? Yeah, some of the best students lost a point on this point. When you log, is it absolute value? No. It is not. This is not for a problem. This is not an integration problem. When you integrate and get log, then there's absolute value. This is not absolute value. It's just log of this. Okay? And last but not least, the negative. Y is negative log of negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. That's your answer. Let's see how you did. Okay. Now, this is the part I want to impress upon you. We said the first thing you had to do is separate the variables, yeah? This is the part I want you to look at. If you don't separate the variables, they stop reading you get a zero sum. They don't care if you integrate as well. They don't care if you have C there. They don't care if you found C well. They don't care if you integrate found Y. You're done. They don't ever look at it. If you don't separate the variables, it's a zero, period, done. That is on every one of these problems. No separation of variables, you're out. So is that step kind of important? Yeah, yeah, because everything else is a waste of your time if you don't show it. Now, I, when I warn you like this, I'm not warning the mediocre to low end of you. I'm, re I'm warning the top end of you because it's, the, it's so many, you know, it, I'm so good at calculus that I can separate my variables and integrate. So here I go. Y is x cubed plus c. Well, you just took a zero. My guy. Okay? Because you didn't separate the variables. So, <coughs> show the separation of the variables. All right? Um, after that, the antiderivatives in this case were two points. Uh, the negative e to the negative y, that's usually where people make their mistakes. If you felt forgot the negative, then you would lose a point for that antiderivative. But that's not substantially easier, so you'd probably be still in for the rest of the points to come. You wouldn't be out. Um, the right side, gosh, that would be a shame if you missed the right side. Are you right? Are you with me? Now, this is the second softest point there. Constant of integration. Just by putting a plus C, you get a point. So your antiderivatives could be just totally wrong. <coughs> totally wrong. And you get a point for the plus C. Um, and then using the initial condition to find the C, that's over here. Now that's based on your equation. So if you messed up the antiderivative here, say you said it was positive, then your C will be different, but you'd still be in on did you, for carry through error, did you find your C correctly? Do you follow? And then last but not least, the did you 
solve for y, that would be based on your equation. If you made a ridiculous mistake that made the problem way easier, you'd probably be out on that. But if your mistake didn't make the problem considerably easier, then you would, uh, they would read for you for Terry's lawyer. You with me? So give yourself 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 6 there. And a total out of 9, off to the side. How are we going to do? Do we get some 9s, 8s, 7s, Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. You'll get better and better. These, these are definitely nineable after a couple of uh, your major mistakes. Let's move on, shall we? Okay. Uh, this one is harder. At least part B was had a hard point in it. Harder to get a nine here. But uh, still easy to get an eight. <coughs> All right. So here we go. Same deal. Tangent line is pretty straightforward. You're going to find the slope. You have a point, I think, given that one, two. And you're finding the slope by the derivative at 1, 2, and did you get 8 for that? Yeah. Okay, so your equation is y minus 2 equals 8 times, 8 or negative 8? Is 8? Eight? Eight. Y minus 2 equals 8 times x minus 2. So grade that. First of all, did you find the slope oh. properly by showing you use the derivative? Second, did you... Use your slope and the point, <coughs> which I didn't do on this last video. Uh, did you use the point and the slope correctly to find the tangent line? Do you follow? Mm -hmm. All right, so you're working on a perfect paper still. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. All right. B. B's where first part's hard, second or first part's easy, second part's hard. Uh, same deal. F at 1.1. If you use f, then you should say is approximately equal to this line with 1.1 put in. Now, I probably have to move the q over first and then put 1.1 in for x. And so my approximation would be 2.8. And they would grade for not saying that it's equal to. All right. All right, so first point is for the approximation. Are you is still at 3 over 2, 3 out of 3? Yeah. Perfect. All right, here's the hard part. Um, given that f is greater than 0, okay, whatever, for a wonder, uh, I had no idea what that meant, why it was there. The approximation for f of 1.1, is it greater or less than f at 1.1? Explain your reasoning. What do I have to investigate? The second derivative. Now, if you would, on your homework, draw a tangent line on a concave up curve and a tangent line on a concave down curve. In this case, the tangent line will underestimate the function value because the tangent line y is below the true y. In a concave down case, the tangent line will overestimate because the tangent line value, y value, is above the curve y value. All right? So we need the second derivative to determine the contrast. Follow me. All right, now I gave this question to a BC, and they largely made the same error. Uh, don't write this down yet, please. Uh, so they said something like the second derivative at 1, 2 is whatever it is, 8 times 1 plus uh, 12, 13 times 8 is 80, uh, 104. Okay? And then they said something like because that's greater than 0, uh, the tangent line underestimates. Uh, very solid understanding. They understand a lot, but they have uh, conceptual error here. Now, imagine, let me give you a picture over here. Imagine if at 1, the curve was concave up. You follow? Yeah. But later, by the time I got to 1.1, 1 .1, the curve was concave down. Will my tangent line over or underestimate now? The tangent line is over, not over. So it's not enough to say concave <coughs> up 
at the point of tangents. It has to stay concave up <coughs> from the point you tangent at to the point you're estimating. It has to be concave up the whole time. Otherwise, you don't know it's an over underestimate. So this would not get you credit for that second point. Though it's solid calculus and you know a lot, it's not enough. And it has a whole other argument. You would have to say something like um, the second derivative is positive, not just at 1, 2, but at all points at all x in 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. In other words, from where I tangent to where I estimate, well, you agree that the second derivative depends on x's and y's and stuff, yeah? Well, in that region, x is what? Positive or negative? It's positive, right? It's 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. Those are positive x's, yes? Okay. And y is? How do you know? Because it says it in the question. Yeah, that's why they gave you that. That, that was not just there. I'm trying to throw you off. That's a reason. Y is 0. Y is greater than 0. Y, or f of x, is greater than 0 is given. And therefore, the second derivative must be positive on the interval. Now, because of that, the curve is always concave up in a, a region of interest, and we can say the tangent line is more or less than the true value. Is If it's concave up, will the tangent line be more or less? Less. less. The tangent line estimate is less than the true value. Uh, that's this problem would have tons of eights but very few nines just because of that radius. You with me? Uh, C. All right. So here's where the meat of the points are. Uh, we need to separate the variables. Please look at the right one. You don't want to try and separate that nonsense. All right. Make sure you look at the derivative. So when you separate the variables, did you get dy over y cubed equals, I can't remember what it was, x dx? Yeah. Okay. Again, <laughs> look right there. Note, 0 out of 5, there's no separation of variables. You're done. Also here, if you didn't find, if you didn't put a plus c, they're very limited. They're, they're very limited in what you can get. Okay. So if yeah, okay, so that's a good question. When they say separation of variables, you don't have to show separation, then integrate in a second step. If you separate and show integration, you're fine. Yeah, no problem. Okay? And it's best to ask because that's smart to do so. All right, so what is the antiderivative of uh, y cubed there? Is it y squared or y to the fourth? Yeah, power rule, again, take the time and use a power rule. I can't tell you how many people would say y to the fourth there because they say one more than three, you raise it by one, and three more than three plus one is four. That's, that's not a three, that's a negative three. Okay, right? And so when you raise that power by one and divide by the new, it's negative one half y to the negative second, or negative one over two y squared, whatever you want to call it. One half x squared. You with me? Did you put you there, or did you, were you careful? Excellent. All right. So now let's use the initial, yes? Using one, two. Uh, if I use one, two, I get uh, this would be negative two, and then two to the negative second would be another two squared down there, right? You can screw that up, I'm sure. One half uh, plus c. So I get negative one eight equals a half plus c, and c there is negative five eighths. Mm -hmm. Actually, I kind of laugh, but I don't see any mistakes, so I guess we're good. You with me? Okay, yeah. so uh, I'll write it this way: one over negative two y squared is one half x squared minus five eighths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Number sense question. This is also a source of common error here. Uh, 
One half equals one fourth plus one fourth. Do you agree that's two? Yeah. Okay, now if you, for whatever reason, in this case, want to take reciprocal so that you can get y on the denominator. If you just take a reciprocal here, take a reciprocal there, take a reciprocal there, is two to the ten? It is not. You just broke that. Okay, that is not true. If you want to take reciprocals, one way is to clear the fractions. Another way is to say, if I want to take reciprocals, then I have to make big old, one big old fraction on both sides, and then take reciprocals. If I make one big old fraction on each side, then take reciprocals, there's two to the ten. Is this still true? Yep. It is true. Okay, so if you want to take reciprocals here, you cannot do it yet. You have to, the safest way is to get a common denominator, something like 4x squared minus 5 over 8, and then, once it's one big old fraction, then take reciprocals. Uh, this should be... Uh, four, uh, is that right? Oh, I cleared, that's right. I cleared the fraction first. That's right. <laughs> you could move the negative two first. That's why I did that in the last class. That probably would have been smarter to move the negative two first, but that's all right. Uh, did you get something like y squared is, what'd you call it? Negative four over four x squared minus five? Yeah? Or did you say something like four over negative four x squared plus five? Is that what yours looks like? Okay, they're, they're equivalent if you multiply top and bottom by negative one. Either one of those is good. What? You, you, oh, no, no, no. We, there's no measurement in the uh, You don't need to square those separately. The combination of signs has to be positive. So I would definitely not do, um, do not take them separately and do not introduce any i. That's a no no. Okay. Um, so y is plus or minus the square root of whichever one. And if that's going to keep from being imaginary, it must be the case that the bottom's negative, so make that happen. Um, but we need to choose. If x, if y is positive 2 when x is 1, we must choose positive. So y is uh, the positive root of whatever you call this. I think this is the cleanest way to write it myself, but whatever. Okay? All right, so in terms of puntos, here we go. Uh, one for separation of variables. This time they only had one for the antiderivatives. Um, one for the constant integration. That's a soft one. Did you just put a plus C even though your antiderivatives might have been wrong? One for did you use the initial condition based on your antiderivatives? And then one for did you solve correct? Yes, we had used the salt for white. How can there not be imaginary numbers? <coughs> well, uh, there can be imaginary numbers, just not in calc. Actually, I, don't know, I shouldn't say that. Um, once you go into imaginary numbers, you're not on the real number plane, x and y. You've crossed off into kind of Dr. Strange bizarro world. It's imaginary in territory. Uh, we don't really do calculus in imaginary territory. I got theorized it's, it's not something we do. <laughs> Which is one more reason to love calculus, because imaginary numbers are. All right. Um, this, did you get the correct differential equation? dt dt is k uh, temperature of the steak minus 70. Yes. Uh, temperature of the steak, then, when you separate the variables and integrate, is. 70 minus 50 e to the log of six, uh, 7 tenths over 5 t. How'd you do this? Yeah, hot. Or something that's mathematically equivalent. We don't have to go over that. Uh, for this, did you get z is 20 e to the negative 1.03 t? Yup. 
x equals 0 is the queen. Position at 1, which is negative 7. And position at 2, which is positive 8. In other words, negative 7 is between 0 and 8. <coughs> it's got pairs between negative 7 and 8. So by IDT, there is a two places where the y values are equal? There are places at the starting time when position is zero and sometime later between one and two when position is zero. So it must pass through zero Right here, what's the average rate of change between those two points? Zero, and therefore there must be a place where the velocity is zero. So you say something like this. I got eight prior for three. For 20, whatever it is, at the bottom right. Anything you'd like me to put up real quick before you leave? Question on anything? Yep. Okay. Okay. Pretty gross. Yep. Yesterday, the one we did Friday is 
Thank you. Thank you.